do here is we're going to try and plot a useful graph from this experimental data. Now we've got a concentration of solution here up at the top and the percentage change in length from lots of different times that that trial has been done by different students. So the first thing that we need, to, we can't plot all of this data on a graph, so we need to take averages of each of these columns. So we're going to use the Excel function average and remember that you just put an equal sign in front to make sure that it is uh, no, that Excel knows that you are typing in a formula. And then once you've typed in average, you can select the things that you want to take an average of, close the brackets, and then press enter. So that's the average of these figures here. Now to make it do that for the, the other three columns, I can just drag across from the bottom right hand corner of the cell and that creates these averages over here as well. Now that's to a large number of decimal places. So I'm going to look over here and I'm going to click the uh, reduce decimal places button there. So now we've got them to one decimal place. So that is our average. Now in order to, to calculate our error bars we need some sort of uncertainty there so we're going to use the standard deviation there. Now standard deviation overlaps into another cell so I'm going to click wrap text up here at the top and that's going to put it down there and the Excel equation, remember your equal sign, the Excel equation is STDEV for standard deviation and again I'm going to select all the data that I want and remember I'm not selecting the average because that is not one of my data points. So I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to drag it across and now I've got the standard deviation for all of my cells and I'm going to change the decimal place numbers there as well. Okay, so now I've got my average, my average percentage change in length, I've got my standard deviation, and so here I, uh, I also have my concentrations, but these are in words and letters and numbers all mixed together, so I need to change those into just numbers so Excel knows that they're numbers. And so it can plot them on a graph. Okay, so now I've got my data, I can plot my graph. So I'm going to select the two things that I want to put in my graph. To select more than one row, I'm holding down the command key on a Mac or the shift key on a, uh, sorry, the control key on a Windows PC. Uh, now I've selected both the rows that I want to plot. I'm going to go insert, and then the charts are all over here. And for this one, I want to scatter charts. I'm going to plot a scatter chart. Now I've got my chart here. It doesn't look very detailed at the moment, um, but what I can do is I can go up here to add chart element, and so I can add my axes titles. And so up here is the percentage change in length in percent. And here is the concentration of solution in moles. So now I've got my data plotted here. I don't have a line or anything, but what I do have is my points. So I don't want my points to be circles because that's not very precise. So I'm going to double click on them and it brings up a menu over here to the right. Now what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to click the paint in, marker, marker options, and then I'm going to change them to an X under this built-in menu. So you can see now they're X's. I'm going to make them a bit bigger so it's easier to see. So now I've got X's as my points instead. Now the next thing I want to do is that these, are, these grid lines are only quite vague, so I'm going to change the grid lines in that I'm going to add my go to add chart element again, and I'm going to add uh, grid lines here and I'm going to add minor vertical and minor horizontal. There we go. So now I've got more grid lines in there. Next thing that I want to do is I want to add, add a line. So I'm going to add chart element, trend line. Um, and it looks like a bit of a straight line, so I'm going to go with linear to start with. But after having added that linear trend line, it kind of looks actually more like a curve. So now I'm going to click on this trend line uh, and my menu for format trend line comes up over here on the right hand side. If your menu has disappeared, you can double click on the trend line and the same menu should appear. 
I'm going to go to this bar chart symbol here and I can choose the type of graph that I want and I'm going to choose polynomial for this and it puts a curve there and it goes nicely through all of those points which is what we're after. Now I don't also really like that it's a dotted line so I'm going to go back into this paint tin over here and I'm going to change the dash type to a solid line. Now it's a bit fat so I'm going to make it a little bit thinner with the width up here and then we've got a nice line of best fit through those points. Now we could stop there, but what we also need to do is we need to represent on the graph how unsure we are about these individual data points, because remember this is only an average, they're not specific data points. So to do that, we need to use the standard deviation that we calculated earlier, and we need to add error bars. So I'm going to go to add chart element, error bars, and then I'm going to go to more error bars options, because this standard deviation is not going to calculate the same thing. So more error bars options. Now the uncertainty in my concentration is nothing, so I'm just going to delete those horizontal error bars, and so now I'm just left with the vertical. I just clicked on them and pressed delete. Here, we've got our horizontal error bars, and again, if you single click on them, your menu should pop up. If your menu's disappeared, you can double click on them. But I don't want these kind of set values because I've calculated the size of my error bars using my standard deviation. So I'm going to click on these three lines for the bar chart, click custom, specify value, and the positive and ne negative are going to be the same, they're both going to be that much. So I'm going to highlight those cells, and then I'm going to negative, highlight those cells, and then OK. And that changes my error bars, so they are the size that the standard deviation tells us that they should be. So now we've got these vertical error bars, we can see how unsure we are about these individual points. Uh, we can add a title here, uh, change in length of potato in different concentrations of solution. Okay, so now we've got a graph with our error bars, and what we're looking for is the place where this line crosses the x-axis. Now my actual line crosses the x-axis about here, but we can see that I'm not very sure about where that line should be because of all these uh, error bars. So what I need to do is I need to add some other possible lines. So I'm going to add the line right at the top of these error bars that cuts the x-axis at the largest possible value, and I'm going to add a line at the bottom of these that cuts the x-axis at the smallest possible value. So I'm going to call that the max line and the min line, and the max line is going to follow the average plus the standard deviation. And again, I can drag that across so Excel calculates it for me. And the mid line is going to be equal to the average minus the standard deviation. And I'm going to drag that across as well. Okay, so now we need to tell Excel to plot those lines. Now the way that we add extra lines to here is we click on the chart and we go to chart design and then select data and that brings up this table here. So now we're going to add a couple more series. A series is another word for a set of data. So we're going to add two more of those. We're going to call one of them max and we're going to call one of them min. Okay, and the max one, we're going to have the x values. We're going to take the x values to be the same, the concentration solution, so it's what's on the x-axis. And the y values for the y-axis, we're going to take from the max line. Okay, so that gives us our max line. And our min, we're going to do the same thing, x values here. And this time, the try again, and do our x values here. And this time, the y values are going to be from the min line, like that. And then we click OK, and you can see that Excel has now plotted those points at the end of each one of the error bars, which is what we are hoping for. Now we just need to add the trend lines, so we're going to do that in the same way as before. And I'm going to try with the same polynomial one as before, and again I want that to be a solid line, not a dotted one. So I'm going to take the thickness down, and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other points. I'm going to, uh, oops, chart design, add chart element, trend line, more trend line options, 
and then I'm going to choose polynomial in there as well. And I'm going to go back to the paint tin and I'm going to change this down and I'm going to make it a solid line. So now we have three gradients plotted on our graph. We have one which intercepts the x-axis here, one which intercepts the x-axis here, and one which intercepts the x-axis there. So that gives us a nice wide range based on our data for what they intercept with the x-axis must be. Now the final thing is if you want to see what those points are, then if you click on the axis, if you want to zoom in a little bit, then you can uh, click on the, the three bar charts here and go axis options, and then you can change the bounds, which is where the axis starts and stops. So I can see that this blue line, for example, is somewhere between 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. So if I change this minimum to 0 0.2, and 0 0.3 for the maximum, then my graph is going to zoom into that section and I can see much more, much more accurately where that line crosses the x-axis. Now if you wanted to, you could zoom in even further, 0 0.22, whoops, 0 0.22 and 0 0.23, and it would be somewhere in between those, and there you go, you can see even more precisely that it crosses the line at about 0 0.226. Now, the other way to do that, if I just uh, undo the changes that I've made there, the other way to do that is you can click on the line, so you get your format trend line, and then you can display equation on the chart. Now, it will show the equation of that line. This value here is obviously the y-intercept, but you can plug values into that equation to figure out exactly what that x-intercept would be as well. So you can figure that out by looking at the graph, by zooming in, or you can do it mathematically if you prefer.